They're arguably the most popular piece of clothing in the world, yet they're also one of the most individual. As any urban cowboy will tell you, nothing fits so well as a pair of denim jeans. Jeans were invented not long after the California gold rush, when a certain Mr. Levi Strauss began making miners denim work pants with copper rivets. To say he came up with a winner is something of an understatement. 450 million pairs are sold every year in the US alone, and worldwide the denim market is worth around 40 billion dollars. But every pair of jeans has made an amazing journey from the cotton field to the high street store. Their story begins 650 kilometers away on the plains of Torreon. Here in these vast fields, they grow one of Mexico's most important crops, cotton. Picking cotton by hand is slow, back-breaking work. Each picker can only harvest around 50 kilos a day, and it's always a gamble whether or not all the cotton can be harvested before the weather changes. Fortunately, cotton farmer Juan Antonio has an ace up his sleeve. The mechanical cotton picker. In just five minutes, this machine can harvest as much cotton as a human picker can manage in a whole day. It works by using lifters to direct the cotton plants between rotating drums. These are attached to a series of spindles covered in barbs, which pluck the ripe balls of cotton from the stem. The cotton is then blown through a tube into a basket at the back. Once Juan has filled his truck, Francisco Gonzalez compresses the whole lot into massive bales ready for transportation. But for each tonne of this harvest, there are 500 kilos of seeds, 100 kilos of leaves and other plant parts, and just 400 kilos of cotton fibre. So to separate the valuable fibre from the debris, it's sent to this 1950s vintage cotton gin. This fabulous old machine looks like a monstrous Wurlitzer jukebox and its job is to dry and clean the raw harvest, removing the unwanted seeds and plant leaves by sieving everything through a fine mesh. It's dusty work, but what emerges at the other end are bales of refined cotton weighing around 200 kilos and containing enough fibre to produce 325 pairs of jeans. But first, the raw cotton needs to be turned into denim. Which is what they do here at the Denim Art Factory in the southern Mexican state of Puebla. The trouble is, when it arrives, every bale of cotton is slightly different. So to make a consistent thread, the cotton needs to be blended. That process begins here in the blow room with bale laydown. A machine called a Trushla Blendomat uses a mechanical arm to pick fibres from the top of the bales. These fibres are then blown along air ducts into special multi-mixes before they're cleaned by being blown around, allowing any trash to fall out the bottom. The resulting fibres still don't look like thread, so it's then down to operators like Jose and his trusty DK760 to perform what's known as carding. Now, despite what you may think, carding isn't something that a Las Vegas croupier does, but is rather the process of untangling the fibres by combing and pulling the cotton into a kind of web. The fibres are then stretched together to form a thick strand called a sliver. At a speed of one and a half thousand feet per minute, six slivers are stretched and combined. The next stage is spinning. At each one of these stations, cotton slivers are pulled and twisted at a rate of up to 120,000 revolutions per minute. There are between 100 and 250 fibres in a single thickness of cotton thread, and just 20 grams of fibre produce a whole kilometre of fine yarn. 
On these giant reels, they now have something that's starting to look like familiar cotton. But to make jeans blue, the cotton first needs to be dyed. You guessed it, yellow. But don't panic, Romero the cowboy isn't going to end up looking like a lemon. The reason the dye is yellow is because indigo blue dye isn't water soluble. So it first needs to be mixed with a reducing agent, sodium hydrosulfite, and it's this that turns it yellow. Then when it's removed, something magical happens. Normally the indigo bath is yellow, okay? But as soon as it has contact with the oxygen, it turns blue. As you can see in the surface of the glass. Because the bond between the dye and cotton isn't very strong, jeans gradually fade. But of course, if jeans didn't fade, they just wouldn't be jeans. The thread is treated with cornstarch to make it stiffer, then after a blast in a dryer, the cotton is ready to use. The trouble is, it's just a bit too blue. Denim originally got its name from a type of French fabric, Serge de Nîmes, Nîmes being a city in France. If you look at it closely, you'll see it actually contains a combination of white and blue thread. So, as the cotton is fed into the loom, it's blended with one strand of white to every three strands of blue. Each of these looms turns out 3,000 metres of denim every week, enough to make cowboys like Romero a pair of jeans with flares the size of wigwams. Those jeans are made here, in Tehuacan. This is Mexico's largest jeans factory and produces designs for most of the famous American brands, churning out 400,000 pairs every month. A typical pair of five-pocket jeans uses 15 pieces of cloth. So they first stack the denim into piles of 100 sheets, ready for each piece of the design to be cut. It's up to pattern layer Antonio Martinez to make sure that as little material as possible is wasted. Using a computer, he can limit the offcuts to just 7%. Once he's happy, the pattern is printed onto paper. Next, the design is rolled out over the denim. This stage is more like carpentry than tailoring, and with the denim 100 sheets deep, any mistake will be costly. Once cut, it's like a military operation, with an army of jean genies assigned to one specific task. Each pair of jeans takes 15 minutes to make, and requires 1.6 meters of denim, several hundred meters of thread, six rivets, and one zipper, or five buttons. On seam ironing duty is Marie Cruz. I like my job a lot because there's no pressure here, unlike other areas of the factory. I iron 300 pairs a day. I like ironing, but later my back will hurt. Marie adds the finishing touches to these spanking new jeans, but they're still not ready to grace a cowboy's behind. These days, everyone's too cool to wear jeans that look brand new. So they're about to become distressed by being slipped onto some rubber legs, blown up and given a little rough handling. In just 60 minutes, this team are going to make the jeans look like they've spent the last five years being dragged around a mine. So they set to work sanding in worn patches, grinding in frayed edges, and spraying on stains. Then, to add a few worn-in designer creases, it's out with a high-tech laser gun. These jeans get an even rougher ride than the buckaroos. To give them a final hammering, they're tossed into gigantic washing machines, along with a few buckets of volcanic rock. Once dried, the jeans are now shrunken and nicely worn in. Or totally trashed, according to your point of view. After a quick press and the obligatory label, so you know whether they're designer expensive or just cheap and cheerful, 
they're boxed and ready to be shipped to budding bronco busters everywhere. <laughs>